All right. Well, it's just excellent to be here today. And we just passed out to everybody a piece of bamboo driftwood we got on the beach just a couple of days ago. And it says on there, yes, Lord. And we also passed out a stone for everybody. Now, if you're happening to be watching this on YouTube, then we, we extend a virtual driftwood to you. And we extend a virtual stone to you. And hopefully when you leave today, you will take one of them with you, but not both of them with you. Now, some of you know that our theme for this year is in 2021, follow the sun. The best advice I can give you or you can ever get in life is to follow the son of God, is to follow Jesus. That's the best advice. My heartbeat for us as a people and the ones listening in is that we will be God chasers. We will be chasing after God, going after God. Now today we are going to key in on one scripture. It's in John chapter 8, uh, verse 12. And it is one of the I am statements of Jesus. The book of John is unique in that it gives, in that it gives seven I am statements of Jesus. Uh, some of them, they're not in the notes, but one is in John 6. He says, I am I am the bread of life. Now, in Greek, thank you, sir. In Greek, when Jesus says, I am, it is the Greek word, ego in me, which means I myself and nobody else. So when he says, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the way, the truth, the life, I am the true vine, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the door, I am the good shepherd, he's saying, it's me and nobody else. Now, he is either very egotistical, he's either very deluded, very deceived, he's a liar, or he's telling the truth. And after uh, walking with the Lord now for almost 50 years, I'm pretty convinced through the scripture and through my life is that Jesus is who he says that he is. Amen. And, and Amen. so today we're going to be looking at one of the I am statements, which is found in John chapter 8, verse 12, which says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. You know, we live in a world, how many would you say that the world we live in seems to be increasingly dark, yes. getting darker? There's, there's darkness happening in this world. And even sometimes, not just the world, but also our, our circumstances. They get foggy, they get hazy, we don't know what's going on. And it's really good to know that Jesus gives us the promise. He says, if you will follow me, he says, I will light up the path. I will light up your life for me. Hence, we have the, the uh, title today, To Light Up Your Life, Follow the Sun. Turn to one of your neighbors and say, neighbor, neighbor. To light up your life, light up your life. Follow, follow the sun. Follow the sun. Oh, absolutamente. All righty. Now, today, our emphasis is that when we follow uh, the life and teaching of Jesus, it will light up our life. Um, Absolutely. And we're going to look at a particular portion in Scripture today that illustrates this very well. Um, you know, sometimes you, uh, whether positively or negatively, we may refer to somebody, well, he's full of, maybe full of goodness or full of not goodness. But in Scripture, in, in John chapter 1, verse 14, it says that Jesus was full of two things. And remember, Jesus is our model. He's our example. He's our, our teacher. And it says in John 1, 14, it, uh, John, who walked with him for three years, it says, we beheld his glory, the one full of grace and the one full of truth. The Passion Translation puts it this way. We gazed upon the splendor of his glory, the glory of the one and only one who came from the Father. Listen to this. Overflowing with mercy and truth. Ah. I'm so glad that's true. You know, and, and, and uh, it comes to my mind, John, or ra rather Psalm 145, verse 8, says, The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. What a God, what a Lord that we serve. Now, this portion here in John chapter 8, uh, it's a very well-known story in the scripture. Uh, the Pharisees, the re Jewish religious leaders of the day, 
uh, the scriptures on the other side of your notes were always trying to catch Jesus. They were always trying to uh, catch, catch him in his words or something like that. And uh, it says that early in the morning he came to the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and he was teaching them. And then the scribes, how many of you have people in your life that have tried to catch you, tried to trap you? Or you have people that have tried to trap you? Well, there's some things here from the scripture that we can learn from Jesus. So the scribes brought to him a woman who was caught in adultery. And they set her right in the midst. You know what always gets me is where was the man? You know, if they're going to if they're going to start accusing people, why didn't they bring the man also who was caught uh, in that also? You know, I, I see some hypocrisy there. But they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us to stone such a one. What do you say? I mean, if you, sometimes people have had to try to trap you, either in business or in personal life with your words. It happens in life, doesn't it? Sure. You know, I remember one of the Greek philosophers, Plugius, said this, I've often regretted my speech, but never my silence. <laughs> so Jesus doesn't answer right away. Maybe he's just communing with the Father uh, what to say, what to do, and he doesn't say anything. As we know, the story goes on. Um, he didn't say anything. He stooped down on the ground, wrote some stuff in the sand on the, on the finger, and they, they, they said, ah, we got him now. Well, then he rose up, and we know it says, it says you, without sin, throw the first stone. You, without sin, throw the first stone. And so, as we know, the scripture says, one by one, what happened? Throwing the stone. Yeah, one by one, they, they walked away and he was left alone with this woman who obviously was greatly embarrassed and shamed, um, you know, that type of thing. Um, and so, as we look at this story here, I want you to remember what the scripture says. God's ways are a lot higher than your ways. You know, we live on this human plane with human reasoning and understanding and we think, uh, all of our life experiences, we have it figured out. Well, the scripture says that God's ways, God's thoughts are much higher than ours. So as we look at this story now, we're going to, uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, learn how to think higher thoughts and learn how to, uh, learn how to understand uh, the ways of God in this. And so <laughs> instead of passing judgment uh, on the woman, I think Jesus uh, pass judgment on the accusers. And you know something? Uh, the scripture says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. So when we accuse others, guess what? We're doing the devil's work for him. Amen. You know, and um, the stone that you have here, and I'm glad that you're not stoning the preacher. I appreciate that <laughs> very, very much. You know? But each, every day of our lives, uh, we have lots of opportunities to, to accuse people and to say, oh, they were wrong, they did this, and all of that type of thing. And we've all heard the expression, uh, I use the expression a lot, uh, there by the grace of God go me. You know, we've all messed up, and sometimes when you see somebody who's messed up, uh, Jesus, as we read the story on, he says, woman, where are your accusers? They weren't there. And then he says, neither do I accuse you. You see, there we see the love of God, we see the tenderness of God, we see the mercy of God, we see the grace of God being extended to this women. Listen, you live in a world where there's a lot of messed up people around you. Now, we don't condone sin. Jesus did not condone her sin. He said, go and sin no more. But uh, if we're going to help people... Um, People around us need a lot of love. They leave, leave a lot of acceptance. And later today, we're going to have a bucket up here. And part of the dynamic today is an opportunity for you before the Lord to say, Lord, I don't want to be one who throws stones at people. I don't want to do, I want to lay that down. You know, what I have found that's been very helpful to me, instead of throwing stones, I throw up prayers. You know, if somebody has offended me or somebody has done wrong to me or somebody uh, is really uh, messed up, uh, I, Lord, 
and there but by the grace of God go me. And I lift up a prayer. It says, God have mercy on them. God help them. God have grace on them. God reveal yourself to them. I find out it's a lot healthier spiritually, physically, psychologically, in every way, to throw up prayers rather than throwing stones at people. You know, throwing stones that may make your flesh feel good. That type of thing. But uh, and we throw stones sometimes when we gossip. You know, we, we're talking to somebody, well, you believe like he did, you did, you did. You know, I understand we can talk, but we really have to watch our hearts and watch our spirits in the, best, in, in the midst of this. And so Jesus modeled uh, mercy and grace for us. Thank God for that. But he also modeled truth. I'm thinking of the story where the young man came to Jesus, came running to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, keep the commandments. And the young man says, who was also rich, he says, I've done that since my youth. You know, I've not, I've not uh, stolen, I've not killed, da, 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 da. And so the young man thought he had all his bases covered. And then Jesus told him some truth. You see, if you love somebody, you're going to tell them truth. And so Jesus said, okay, all of those riches that you have, Sell them, come and follow me. Now, there's nothing wrong with riches. There's nothing wrong with having money. God wants you to prosper and, and be in health. But in this case, uh, he didn't have the money. The money had him. And so, uh, although the young man thought he was right, actually he had an idol uh, bigger than God, which was big, bigger than God, and he loved the money more than he loved God. And so the scripture says specifically, Jesus loved him, and then the young man was very sad. The young rich man was very sad, and he walked away. Guess what? Jesus didn't go chasing after him. He told him truth. He told him love. But we need to be like Jesus. We need to speak truth, and we need to speak love. And probably, sadly, the young rich ruler died the old rich ruler because he wouldn't lay down his idols before the Lord. All righty. And so... Now, when Jesus said to the woman, neither do I condemn you, he was, he was expressing mercy and forgiveness towards her. Now, forgiveness for you and I, it's very free, but it's not cheap. Because Jesus had to die on that cross for you and I, for us to receive forgiveness. So, you know, as, as we are endeavoring uh, to light up our life, uh, we are endeavoring to follow the teaching and follow the example of Jesus as one who is full of grace, but also full of truth. You know, sometimes when I, I remember I've told this story before, but there's some gal, this is whatever, 25 years ago, married, four kids, uh, and uh, she, some guy at work started paying attention to her and he, uh, she fell for the infatuation. She came to me and she says, Pastor, I miss the will of God. The will of God is I not be with my husband, but the will of God is that I be with this man. And so, you know, I tried, I tried, I, I just didn't throw truth at her and say, no! You know, I try, I, you know, I understand. And her husband actually was, was a good guy, but sometimes he spent more time watching sports than he did with her and watching his, and, and with his family. And so I ministered to her, uh, grace, but I also ministered truth. And I said, sister, you know, I shared the scriptures with her. So as you and I try to follow Jesus, we want to be people who are full of what? Full of grace and full of truth. You know, um, and, you know, some of the verses we have in here. Um, See, if we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to listen to his words. And the scripture says in Psalm 119, verse 130, it says, The entrance of your word gives light. So sometimes if we're hazy and if things are dark, open the word of God and allow it to give uh, light unto you. Most of us are familiar with Psalm 119, 105. It says, your word is a, a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Um, as I was thinking about this, I was reminded uh, of something almost 50 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I had just recently come to Jesus, and I had a girlfriend there, 
and she was perfect for me because she, long blonde hair, beach girl, beautiful smile, lively, attractive, and I could just see my entire future with this girl. Really, I mean, just you know, I mean, and she she was from Florida, a beach town. I'm from a beach town. I mean, it was meant to be, you know. And, and she and I were clicking very good. And then I started uh, following Jesus, and as I started following Jesus, and she was sort of tagging along to see what it was like. But then I, uh, I started understanding through the scriptures that sex is a very beautiful, wonderful thing in the context of the, the marriage institution, you know? And so I, I started looking at that, and so I said to her, you know, I said, I, I'm understanding that if I'm really going to follow God, then, you know, until we get married possibly one day, you know, I need, I, I, I think we need to be celibate. You know, she looked like me, like I was from Mars or something, you know, and just like, you know, and so we talked and everything, and uh, she says, you know, I, I don't want to go that way. And so I saw at that moment, I had a choice in life. I had a choice uh, as, a, as a piece of driftwood, you know, going through life. I could just uh, say yes to her name. I won't say her name, but I can say yes, and I could have followed her. And I could have walked down that path with her, wherever that path would have led. And I don't think Jesus would have uh, endorsed that path. He would have loved me. But uh, by the grace of God, as I look back on it, I didn't realize it then. But it was one of those pivotal moments in my life when I, when I uh, got along with God and I said, yes, Lord. But then I also said, Please send a good woman into my life. I said, I said please send a God-fearing woman hungry after you. And, you know, I, I bear witness after almost 45 years of marriage, of, of being faithfully married, praise the Lord, uh, that, you know, Carmen is that woman. But I want, I, you know, I, it scares me to think of what my life would have been if I just sort of, uh, you know, have one, one, uh, one foot over here. I'm going to follow Jesus. But then one foot over here, you know, with the world and try to ride the fence. And it, it's not comfortable, you know. And so really the, the, the challenge for us, Jesus says this, if you follow me, I will light up your life. I will bless your life. I will enrich your life. You will have good life. But the opposite is, is also true. If you don't follow me, he says, then that promise of your life being lit up, isn't going to be lit up the way it can be in what way and the way that it should be and so a little bit in you know, just a few minutes from now um, we're going to have some prayer people come up after you put your your uh, casting stone uh, in, in the uh, in the bucket there and people want to pray with you and I, and I want to pray with you even the ones listening in from different parts of the world on, on YouTube and uh, You know, the, the bamboo, you're that piece of bamboo. And you can choose to say, yes, Lord, or, uh, you know, and we initially say, yes, Lord. The scripture says, as many as call upon me shall be saved. So if you never really called upon the Lord and said, Lord, I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, my everything. I receive you, Lord. I turn from, from sin and I turn unto you. The Lord will receive you with welcome arms. But also those of us um, who are uh, have walked with the Lord, I was, I was blessed. If you ask me a highlight of last week, I mean, there was such receptivity. But somebody came up for prayer. And I said, what do you want, brother? And he says, I want God to put it in me. I want God to put it in my heart. And I said, what do you want God to put in your heart? He says, I want God to put that yes, Lord, in my heart. I says, I want to be a yes, Lord, man. Yes, Lord. And so you see, each one of us is responsible for the, the setting of our heart, right? the setting of our lives, the, the, where we're going to set our hearts. And I know most of you uh, are there, but it's something that we need to do really on a daily basis. Um, you know, after... After, like I said, in, in this coming October, I will turn 50 years old spiritually. And probably the number one thing that I have found out over these years, that if I meet God in the morning, I cannot stray too far away. Because I have backslidden in my early years. I have strayed. But if I will get alone with God 
at the beginning of every day, even if I messed up the day before, I am not going to stray too far from God. So every day I began with a, yes, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Put your hand on your heart, if you would, and uh, hand on heart. And um, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for each one here today. Also, Lord, for those who are, are listening in. Lord, we need you. We need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, every person here listening in, we need you. And Lord, you promise that you will light up our lives, Lord, if we'll follow you. And Lord, right now, Lord, we just say yes to you, Lord. Just say yes wherever you are. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to follow you and go after you, Father God. And Lord, uh, wherever ones are listening in from Africa or whatever, United States, we just speak blessing and favor over you. Thank you for listening in. We love you. We love everybody here. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord.